Hi, I'm Matt Woodjack, the training manager for Redland, and I'm here today at JJ Roofing Supplies Trading Centre at Cricklewood. Uh, we're looking at a, a valley detail today. We're really spoilt for choice when looking at ways to fill in a valley. We've got our traditional lead, we've got GRP open valleys now, dry valley, and also what we'll be looking at today is lead replacement, rapid flashing. Today we'll be installing Wackerflex rapid flashing on a 100mm open valley. So we're going to have tiles overhanging either side 50mm to give us a 100mm space in the centre where we'll dress this butyl rubber material in as a lead replacement. Rapid flashing is made of butyl rubber with a wire mesh through the centre to give it strength as well as flexibility. We have perforated sheets on the back so you can take the back cover off in pieces to allow you ease of application. And as you'll see either side underneath, we have a butyl strip to adhere to the roof material while we're putting it in place. We're going to be installing Wackerflex rapid flashing into this open valley here. We've got the boards already in place, toll buttons in place, and also a button here to welt up the edges of the valley detail to prevent water from spilling out over the top. We'll protect this further by welting up the material itself on the edges, as you'll see shortly. Rapid flashing, Wackerflex rapid flashing, can be laid in lengths of 2.5 metres, as opposed to with lead, which is 1.5 metres. So we're using fewer laps and less wastage on the roof. The first thing we do is lay the Wackerflex rapid flashing into our valley detail. It's a nice light material, so compared with lead, it's easier to handle, easier to move on the roof. We can measure it into detail, bring it down to the bottom of the valley and mark where we want it to be trimmed off at the bottom to feed into our gutters. We can cut it with a simple pair of scissors or a pair of snips like I have here. But it's easy to cut but difficult to tear. We have the rapid flashing piece placed into the valley detail here, positioned over the boards, levelled off with the bottom, which we can trim to shape to the shape of our gutters later on. What we need to be doing now is tacking the material in to the battens beneath and then forming the material into the boards of the valley. So we've got a nice slick surface for the water to be carried down the roof. So we have our material in place now, over the board and over the battens to the left and right. We can trim that off later to suit the gutters beneath, but for now we're going to keep it in place and tack it into the battens that are pre-installed over the side and start to form the material into the valley. It's got that stretchability controlled by the wire mesh inside which will allow it to move and form to the shape of the valley beneath. At this point, we can remove the backing strip on one side, then the other, to allow us to tack the material into place over the buttons beneath, like so. This means we can work with the material without the other side sticking down while we're doing that. We don't want the butyl to stick to the batten as we'll be curling that back up in a moment and welting it upwards. Popped on my glove now as we're starting to play with hammer and nails. And get our first fixing into the top of the batten here. We just want enough fixings now to hold the material in place up the side of the batten.
And then when we're ready, we can remove the seal from this side and tack it in exactly the same way. Remember to remove the central piece as well. You don't want to leave that in place because you want the tackiness beneath the material to help it stick to the roof detail. So we're just tacking the material in place as we move up. Again, making sure the butyl strip doesn't stick down to the underlay beneath. So we can welt that up shortly. And we'll have another series of tacks holding those in place. So remember, as we're tacking the material down initially, we want to leave enough overlay here so we can welt the material back. We're then going to place another series of tacks up either side of the valley detail to hold that welt in place and the tiles will then sit over the top. You might want to take your gloves off to do the welt as you will lose them as they stick to the butyl. Don't worry about it looking pretty, it's there for a function to carry water back into the valley and at the end of the day the tiles will be overhanging this by 50 mil so you're not going to see the detail. The rapid flashing material, if there's any slack on the slides, should fold in quite neat, neatly into the valley. So it stretches in on either side. If you want to use a roller to support you doing that, then feel free. But at the end of the day, all you want is a nice smooth run of the material down your valley pressed in either side. We've now completed the installation of our Wackerflex rapid flashing material, our lead replacement material. We've got a single piece. We can have pieces up to 2.5 metres. So for a small valley such as this, you don't need to have 150 laps wasted material where the material is overlapping each other. Remember with, with lead, you can only have a piece of 1.5 metres before you need a second piece cut and a 150 lap. Whereas with rapid flushing, Wacker Flex, you only got one lap after 2.5 metres. We've got the system installed here, the rapid flushing Wacker Flex in place, it's stretched into the detail, tacked in along the buttons either side, We've got that backing seal removed to allow the material to tack to the valley, to the valley boards beneath and then welted up either side so the butyl is actually facing upwards and tacked in up either side of the valley. What we'll be doing now is actually putting the tiles either side of the valley with a 150 overhang um, to finish the detail off. As we've mentioned, you don't need to have a lap with a small valley such as this, but where you do, rapid flashing really comes into its own. You don't need any tapes or glues with Wackerflex Rapid Flashing. It sticks to itself. In fact, it chemically bonds to itself. If you put two pieces of material together, they actually become a single piece. So where after 2.5 meters, we do have our 150 lap, you simply put two pieces over each other and securely wedge them together. And you'll find once that material has been put together, after a few moments of it being placed there, it actually chemically bonds and you're physically destroying the material to get it apart. It actually becomes one piece. So there's no need for clips or glues when you're sealing laps with a back and flex rapid flushing. So the detail's almost complete now. We've got the lead replacement material in the valley, 
um, tacked on either side and welted up on the sides. We've now cut the tiles following the line of the valley up and down the roof. They're overhanging into the valley by 50 mil, which should, when complete, give adequate space for the rain to flow into there and allow liquids to flow down the roof and into the guttering beneath. Remember in the BS5534, each of these perimeter tiles, each of these are a perimeter tile on either side of the valley, needs to be fixed twice. So two mechanical fixings per tile either side of the valley. If you've lost the nail hole, as we have on the top tile up there, you look, you're using clips such as C-clips, crow clips or tail clips, which we'll look at elsewhere. So we've completed the valley detail now. We've got the material in place, the lead replacement material in place on the valley board, tacked in either side and welted up to really weatherproof that valley detail. We've done half the tiling now, tiled in, 50 mil overhang into the valley, which when we mirror that the other side will give us a nice 100 mil gap in the centre for a 100 mil open valley, allowing liquids to flow down the roof and into the guttering beneath.